This is Professor Barry Brennan. I'm going to talk to you about communication privacy management theory. And that theory is going to, is coming after the other theory we just talked about, social penetration theory. It also looks at uh, disclosure as a mechanism in this theory in terms of like a variable, the thing that they study, what is central to making that theory or using that theory is looking at disclosure. In this case, they're going to talk about how you use disclosure in terms of privacy. So let's move to the PowerPoint and we'll have a better discussion. Okay, here we are. So communication privacy management theory. Uh, the author of this theory her name is Sandra Petronio, and she's actually a communication scholar. So the focus here is on communication, even more than social penetration theory, which can be used to look at and you know, use, use in psychology or used in sociology. But this is particularly about a theory that's used in the communication field that looks at communication between individuals. So communication privacy management theory produces a way to understand how people handle choices to reveal or conceal private information as they interact in social relationships. Okay, so notice that it says social re relationships. It could be any kind of relationship. It could be a family relationship. It could be a friendship. It could be an intimate partner relationship. But in any kind of social relationship, how it looks at how do we reveal, so reveal means we share, or conceal, like keep it close to ourselves, hide it. How do we reveal or conceal private information as you move through your relationships, right? How do we do that? How do we make choices about that? So that's the other key word is, how do people handle choices or make choices about revealing or concealing private information in their relationships. And the other piece is this looks at, which is similar to social penetration theory, this looks at that dialectical tension between wanting to disclose and wanting to remain private. Okay, wanting to share and not wanting to. Remember, I talked about that. Come here, come here, come here, go away, go away, go away. Public self, private self, public self, private self. So it looks at that, this tension between wanting to get close, but being afraid to get close, wanting to get close, but being afraid to get close. But remember, we're talking about private information. So the communication of private information, how, how do we decide to do that? So what's really important to recognize and to keep in mind as we discuss all these, we're going to discuss what I call the rules or the axioms of, the, of this theory, is the private information, the information that is defined as private, is defined by the person holding it. Okay, The person who has that information defines it as private. So private information is defined as information known only to the person holding it person holding it defines it as private. It's known only to the person holding it. That's what it means by private. It belongs here. Okay. All right. Five principles or five axioms. People believe they own their own private information and assume they have the right to control access to it. So in other words, we believe, this is what this theory says, we believe that our information about ourselves belongs to us, and we get to decide who gets it and who doesn't. Who gets access to it and who doesn't. We have, we have control over that. We have control over who has access and who doesn't. It's our information, and we decide. That's the first principle. The second principle is people believe they have the right to control the boundary surrounding that private information, the boundaries can be understood as privacy rules. And here's a new part of the language, privacy rules that are based upon criteria for revealing or concealing the information. So you've got private information. It's private, so you've created some kind of wall around it. 
No one even knows you have the information because it's private, right? Let's go back to that private self thing. It's private. And the boundaries around this private privacy is you have rules. It's your rules based upon whether you're going to reveal or conceal. So you might have something that's private that you're only going to share with someone that you're going to marry, for example. That's a rule. A rule around revealing. Okay. Let's say you then this information, you share it with the person. That's your rule with the person you're going to marry, but you're never going to share it with your father. Okay. That's your rule about concealing. That's what that means. Very simple. Just keep it in mind. So now we know that the person, they believe that their private information belongs to them and they have the right to say who gets access to it. And they also create rules, privacy rules around who, who they're going to share it with and who they're going to keep it from. When a person, number three, when a person reveals private information to another person, the other person becomes a co-owner of that information. The receiver is then considered responsible for the care and protection of that information, the private information, from the perspective of the discloser. So let's put it in simple terms. So I decide I'm going to reveal this uh, private information to you. The minute I do that, you become now a co-owner of my private information. You become part of my private information. You're now within the boundary, right? I put that boundary around this boundary. You know, you're within that circle. The circle is the private information is in here and it was here and you weren't in it and I just put you in it. You're now a co-owner of my private information. And, and even more important, you're considered, again, this is what the theory says, you're considered responsible for that information now. You're a co-owner and you're responsible for taking care of it and treating it with the rules I gave you, right? Let's get to that. Once a disclosure is made, privacy rules are negotiated and coordinated between the two people to ensure boundaries from third party access. That means from someone else. So you and your best friend, you share this private information with your friend. Your friend becomes a co-owner. Now your, co you know, your friend who's a co-owner of that information is now responsible and ha responsible for caring for it. And also the privacy rules that you two negotiate and coordinate. So you say, hey, um, Julie, I'm going to share this information with you. And here's the deal. Um, when, then I share the information. Then I say, look, it's really important that um, Jack doesn't know anything about this. So I've now just said the rule. And Julie says, okay, I, I will not tell Jack. So now this is a rule. You're, Julie's a co-owner with you and it's between you and you and the third party would be Jack, right? Cause she just established only Jack's not supposed to know. Okay. Whoever Jack is, right? Got it. Okay. Now when there's a failure to coordinate privacy rules around the disclosed information, the relationship is likely to erupt in boundary turbulence. What does this mean? This means that I've told Julie a secret. Julie keeps that secret or that private information. I'm just going to call it a secret private information between us. Eventually, Julie and I, we're still friends, but maybe we're not as close of friends. At some point, Julie starts dating Jack and Jack, she ends up telling Jack, this, this thing that I said, do not tell Jack about it. Well, that erupts in what we call boundary turbulence. I mean, Julie and I now have a problem because Julie has betrayed me. That's how I'm going to feel about it, right? She betrayed a trust. I trusted her to keep this information between us. And there was probably a reason why I didn't want Jack to know. But now Julie went ahead and did this. So now Jack's part of this thing in and we got problems. And we're going to talk more about conflict later on in the semester. But that's basically what this, this the, the principles of this communication privacy management theory says. That someone has their information, they have the right to control who, who gets access to it, it belongs to them, and that they create privacy rules around who they're going to reveal it to and who they're going to conceal it from. 
then it, once they share it with someone, that person becomes a co-owner and is responsible for caring, caring for that information. And then between those two people, they negotiate rules. They set up some privacy rules around that. And if, if, if that person that has been that co-owner, if the co-owner violates the rules, it's going to erupt in what we call boundary turbulence. That's the gist of that particular theory. Enjoyed sharing it with you. It's a very interesting theory and very applicable to life. That's it for me. I'll see you later.